focusing on one-sided limits and still focusing on the computational techniques of this. Again, these techniques are almost identical to the finite limit section, except for anything highlighted in orange is the new techniques that we have to alter it for. So let's go ahead and look at our next computational example. So we see that this problem has three different parts to it, but we can see it's the same function all the way through, x minus 2 over x minus 4. The only thing that's different in these three parts is in A, we're looking as x is approaching 4. In B, we're looking as x is approaching 4 from the right-hand side. And in C, we're looking as x is approaching 4 from the left-hand side. I suggest that you pause the video to see if you can figure out all three of these answers on your own. So, reviewing our computational techniques, we know the first step in any situation is to substitute in the x value, ignoring the right hand and the left hand side. So, let's go ahead and do that for this example here. Let's substitute in 4. So, on the top, we get 4 minus 2, and on the bottom, we get 4 minus 4. So, 4 minus 2 gives us 2, and 2 over 0, if we were looking for the function of this, would be undefined. But well, let's see what happens when we're looking for the limit of this. Now, this puts us in category number two. If we get a number over zero, there is a vertical asymptote at that place. Now, if we're looking for the limit in general, meaning as x is approaching the number, then our answer is going to be it does not exist because our graphs rarely match on opposite sides of our vertical asymptote. And so that's going to be the answer to part A. Since I have a vertical asymptote here, my limit as x is approaching 4 is going to be it does not exist. Now, that gives us an insight as to what's happening with part B and part C, but that does not give us the exact answers for part B and C. So let's go back and let's see what this orange is. If we're looking for one-sided limits, which is what we're going to do in those two parts, the answer is going to be positive or negative infinity because our graph is going to follow the vertical asymptote at that place. So to figure out which is happening on which side, we have to plug in a number very close to x on that appropriate side to see whether my answer is going to be positive, meaning positive infinity, or negative, meaning negative infinity. So let's go back and look at this example again. Let's look at the graph of it first to give you an insight, and then we'll actually figure out to do this by using the technique that I just showed you. So if we sketch this graph, we just said that there's going to be a vertical asymptote at 4. So on the left-hand side, our graph's got to approach that vertical asymptote, either going all the way up or going all the way down. And we just have to figure out which case is the option here. And on the right, it's going to do the same thing, approaching our vertical asymptote going all the way up or going all the way down. And again, we have to figure out which situation it is. Now, we can sketch this graph and we can go with it, or we can plug in a number close to x on the appropriate side to see which version of the graph that we have. So if I'm looking at x is approaching 4 from the right-hand side, I want to plug in a number close to 4 but larger than 4 to ensure that I am on the right-hand side. So most people think, well, let me just plug in 5. Now that works, but we want to plug in a number really close to 4 because sometimes if I go out here to 5, I'm already too, fi too far out. So I want to plug in a number really close to this vertical asymptote here. So I'm going to plug in the number 4.1. Let me plug that into my, my function. On the top, 4.1 minus 2. On the bottom, 4.1 minus 4. Now, I don't care about numbers here. I care about signs. On the top, I get a positive answer. On the bottom, I get a positive answer, which means my sign to this is going to be positive, which means I'm above my x-axis. So if I'm looking
looking at 4 from the right-hand side, I know that it's not going to be this one. It's no, it's going to be my positive version, meaning it's going to go up forever. And the farther out we get, the closer to my vertical asymptote it is there. So since this is positive, that means my answer is going to be positive infinity. Let me do the same thing from part C. X is approaching 4, but here I'm looking at from the left-hand side. So let me plug in a number close to 4 from the left, and the closer the better. I'm going to plug in 3.9, but I really could plug in 3.99 or even something closer than that. On the top, when I plug it in, I see that I get a positive number. On the bottom, when I plug it in, I see that I get a negative number. And a positive divided by negative gives me a negative. So that means my graph is going to go down forever on the left-hand side of this graph. So this is a very rough and a very ugly sketch of what my graph is going to look like. So as x is approaching 4 from the left-hand side, we already said the answer is negative. So that means my overall answer is negative infinity. Now, if you don't trust your work, you are always more than welcome to graph this officially using all of those graphing techniques that we learned before, graphing rational functions. Or we can go ahead and use our graphing calculator. And I'm going to do that here. So I have my function here plugged into my graphing calculator, x minus 2 over x minus 4. Make sure you put parentheses around both the numerator and the denominator. I'm going to graph this on the standard window. So I'm going to push my zoom button and then my 6 for z standard. We should see the vertical asymptote at 4, even though our graph doesn't actually draw it. And we see on the left, our graph goes down forever, meaning part 3c here, the limit as x is approaching 4 from the left-hand side, our answer is negative infinity. If we were to approach this vertical asymptote on the right, we would see that our graph goes up forever. So that answers us 3b, as x is approaching 4 from the right-hand side, our answer is positive infinity. Now, we really should do 3b and 3c first, because that helps us answer 3a. What's our overall limit as x is approaching 4? The answer here is it does not exist, because the limit from the left does not match the limit from the right. So we have answered all three of these parts to this function. And now you can see the difference between the one-sided limits and just the finite limits that we did a few sections ago. I'm going to stop this video here, and I have one more computational technique of another example in the next video.